another session of Fundai Mission Consolidation. Uh, today we are going to see about the Casa Grande and Taylor methods in finding the time factor. Uh, let's move on to this. So uh, we know we do a con one dimensional consolidation test in our laboratories. So we place a soil sample which is roughly around a small hockey puck size which is around 20 millimeter in height and somewhat around 50 mm in, uh, in the diameter. It's a cylindrical object. We place this in our odometer cell and we do a one dimensional consolidation test. Typically, in open university, we follow a loading sequence of uh, half kg, uh, increasing to 1 kg, then 2 kg, then 4 kg. And then we drop back to 2 kg, skip, we skip uh, point, uh, a particular load increment here, that is the 1 kg, and we bring it to half kg and finally to zero loading and we perform a one dimensional consolidation test, reading the settlement using the dial gauge in intervals of uh, zero seconds, six seconds, 15 seconds, then 15 seconds, then 30 seconds, 60 seconds, that is one minute, then for two minutes, four minutes, uh, eight minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, that is one hour, two hours, four hours, eight hours, then after 24 hours. This is typically our loading sequence which we use for all these loading increments. So after obtaining the loading increments for every load here, we draw the Casa Grande and uh, Taylor graphs to obtain the time factors. So let's see what is the Casa Grande graph and, uh, and the Taylor's graph. Right. The Casa Grande graph, which is a log time versus settlement in millimeter. This is typically in minutes. So as we know in log scale, the time starts from 0 0.1, that is the six second mark. And we get a graph, which is roughly in this shape. So here we can differentiate this graph into distinctly, distinctly into three parts as we have already discussed. Uh, here the portion with a steep slope somewhat around here, around this portion. Here we can find out where the primary consolidation has ended by drawing a tangent here and a tangent portion to this secondary and up to here. So this would be our primary consolidation part and below this would be our secondary consolidation part. Right? So above this would be our initial settlement part and we can find the value also. Right. So here we usually mark this value as delta 100. So we know the place where the primary consolidation has ended. Primary consolidation ends here. So how to find where the primary consolidation starts? For that, the Casa Grande person has uh, performed, sorry, proposed an idea to take four times of the initial time, that is 0 0.4. So we have to find the time which marks as 0 0.4 and draw a line back to the graph and find the respective settlement. And then these two very small value, this is the x value, this is the x value. We have to find the same x value above this black line that is where our graph starts. So here and mark that and this would be our delta zero. 
so this line this dot dot blue line this discontinuous blue line would be our delta zero where our primary consolidation starts here our primary consolidation starts right then after taking an average for this delta zero and delta hundred he has us pro provided a value which is delta 50 we get the value delta 50 so that is delta 50 we are the 50 percentage of the primary consolidation has ended so the particular time where this 50 percent has ended we take it from the graph and it is known as t50 which we will later use to find coefficient of consolidation so this is one method which uh, which uh, which we can use to find the time factors not only t50 we can find other met, uh, methods also assuming the variation as linear the next method uh, is from uh, taylor which is uh, using settlement versus next method we have we use settlement delta and log of root t square root of t here the graph is a bit different so it is like this here according to taylor's method we can find t90 where 90 percentage of primary consolidation has ended here he proposed so in this area where there is a steep slope, he, pro he proposes to find a line which connect, uh, connects many points in that line and extend it up to time axis and back to settlement axis. And measure this distance and get 1.15 times of it. Mark that point. And from here, we have to connect these two points to where it cuts the graph, gives the 90 percentage of settlement and the particular time here, this is T90. So here, this point gives you the zero settlement, delta zero for the uh, primary consolidation starting point so this would be our delta zero where the primary consolidation starts here so this delta 90 we have delta 90 so using these two values so here to here there's a linear variation assuming there's a linear variation we know the 90 percent mark so if we know the 90 percent mark we can definitely find where the 100 mark with a simple linear uh, interpolation so here we will get the hundred delta hundred where are the primary consolidation ends so this is a simple calculation here in this graph we can distinctly find the amount of initial settlement we know from delta zero to delta hundred this is the primary consolidation here below this line this would be our secondary consolidation so this would be the initial settlement so we can distinctly find this from the Taylor's method right so after performing these uh, calculations for each load increment so we do this for our loading sequence then there's a theory performed proposed by uh, Tesaki known as the one dimensional consolidation theory which gives us some equations to find the degree of consolidation and the according time factor so from the theory one dimensional uh, tesagi's theory from the tesagi's one dimensional theory he has given us two equations for time factor capital T pi by 4 by u squared when u is less than 60 percent and another equation which is t equal 1.781 minus 0 0.933 log 
100 minus u when u is greater than 60 percent so these two equations we can find the particular time factor according to the degree of consolidation so what is degree of consolidation degree of consolidation is it's a ratio uh, it's a kind of a ratio according to the settlement now let's say there are some particular soil where its uh, total expected settlement is uh, let's say 500 mm and after some time maybe one or two years or a certain time the settlement is around 200 mm so this is the settlement now so this one is the expected settlement so the degree of consolidation can be calculated as 200 by 500 into 100 to find it as percentage that is how much it has settled now from its total settlement as a percentage so if we calculate this would be around 40 percentage so at the same time this can be expressed in terms of pore water pressure so capital U is equal to which is simple U minus UI so UI my sorry UI minus U over UI so here simple UI is the initial pore pressure initial pore pressure and U this is the change in pore pressure so we know unless there is a pore pressure pore water dissipation or decrease in pore water pressure there won't be any consolidation happening so when pore water pressure decreases we know how much uh, consolidation has happened as the amount of water dissipation is high the degree of consolidation is also high right so we know what is the uh, degree of consolidation and we know what is the time factor from this argis theorem so from these we can write an equation for the coefficient of consolidation so that equation gives us that is t equal cv times t simple t over d squared so this is a very important equation we'll come to this in detail so here in this equation So here there are three main components we already know time how to find time factor we already know how to find the time from the Casa Grande or Taylor's graph CV that is coefficient of consolidation so this represents the rate at which the consolidation is happening this is a coefficient which sometimes it might is not a constant value it changes so whoever has performed the one dimension consolidation test they know this value changes and the last one the d that is the drainage path the length of the drainage path so here we have to be careful in finding this for a particular sample let's see an example uh, right for a particular load let's say one kilogram uh, when you are starting the soil sample dimensions are the height is 20 mm and there are two way drainage so the drainage path would be simply 20 by 2 as the water can drain in both ways from the center so at the start for one kg the soil has undergone a settlement of let's say a small value a and after the loading after one hour the settlement is from the dial gauge reading the settlement is b so we know throughout the practical the drainage path has varied so what would be the drainage path at the beginning the length would be simply let's say i'll assume the total length as l so here the drainage path would be l minus a by 2 here the drainage path d1 here the drainage path d2 would be l minus p by 2 
So at the beginning there is a different drainage path, at the end there is a different drainage path. So to be to use it in this equation, we take the average that is d is equal to d1 plus d2 by 2, which gives us uh, let's see. So L minus A by 2 plus L minus B by 2 by 2, which is equal to so here L by 2 plus L by 2 it gives you L. So minus A minus B by 2, sorry A plus B by 2 over. So this would be our final drainage path left. So you have to be careful in finding this drainage path before using this equation. So from these equations you can find the CV. So to find the CV we know we need capital T uh, and D and simple T. Sim we know how we get simple T, we know how we get capital T and now the CV part is completed and we know how to find D. Right. So the typical values for capital T from the one dimensional consolidation theory of Tesagi is uh, when uh, T50 that is for 50 percentage using this equation 5 by 4 by Q squared so this is 0 0.196 typically and uh, from this equation t equal 1.781 minus 0 0.933 log 100 minus u for t90 we get a value around 0 0.848 so these can be easily calculated right now even for the secondary consolidation we can find a constant that is C alpha, typically it is noted as C alpha in log T and delta graph when we draw the Tesagis, sorry, in the Casagrande's graph, we get a slope here. So that is after the primary consolidation end, we can find a beyond this, below this part, we can just get a slope alpha, let's say that angle is alpha, that C alpha value simply is given by delta E, that is change in void ratio or change in uh, the settlement, delta E or change in settlement because both can be used here over log T1 by T2. Right. So I'll talk uh, deeply about this in a uh, Q&A session and uh, so to give a clear idea regarding the initial settlement uh, primary consolidation value and the secondary consolidation value, uh, I have a lab data which I myself performed in my lab session and uh, from that lab data I'll just uh, give an idea to get the primary consolidation and uh, secondary consolidation, initial consolidation values. So, in the Casa Grande graph, we know that the graph is typically in this, you know, and it continues, the creep continues. So, this is log t versus delta. So, my graph which I perform, this value, the settlement at 0 0.1, this gives a value of 0 0.44 mm millimeter. And my final consolidation value, that is after one day, so this is for one kilogram loading, yeah, this is for one kilogram loading and it was kept for 24 hours and after 24 hours, this is after one day, after 24 hours, uh, the settlement was 0 0.670 right so to find the point where primary consolidation is ended we know we need to draw two tangents so one tangent 
here in this part and another tangent from this part and this gives the primary consolidation settlement uh, which is around 0 0.640 so I did this part in Excel and I got the values so then we have to find where the primary consolidation starts so the primary consolidation starts you know the method you have to find the time four times of this value that is 0 0.4 and find the settlement for that draw a line here get this length and the same length above here and mark zero settlement so this would be the zero settlement which i got as 0 0.42 which is delta zero so the primary consolidation starts when the settlement is 0.42 and ends when the settlement is around 0.64. So this 0.03 value, this small portion, this very small portion, this has occurred due to the secondary consolidation of the solid sample. So this major part from here to here, this is due to primary consolidation, but actually before loading one kilogram, we know we usually load, we have loaded half kilogram according to our loading sequence. So in the, this half kilogram loading, our settlement was 0 0.382 mm. So the primary consolidation starts at 0 0.42, but this one kilogram loading sequence starts when the settlement is 0 0.382. So what is the why there is a variation here? If you think it, this is due to the initial settlement. So this initial settlement has occurred due to the air removal in the, in the sample, which could not be removed by this half kilogram. So when there is a one kilogram load in the sample, there are more, some more air which, which are extracted out and filled by water and uh, that the immediate settlement then the primary consolidation starts and ends with the secondary consolidation values when we move into the taylor's method so according to taylor's method so here this is log t square root of t we can start the graph from zero so the graph pattern is typically So to find the time factors, we know we do a small construction connecting the most of the straight lines with most of the points to form a straight line and then multiplying it one point by 1.15 and drawing another straight line connecting those two points somewhere like this. So if this is x and this would be 1.15x. So here this gives us the value of delta 90. So here this point gives the value of delta zero. So as according to my laboratory data suppressing this, so this came as the exact value and this gave a value of 0 0.60. So here this value is 0 0.382. So we can find where the 100 percentage primary consolidation has ended. It's a simple linear interpolation so so delta 90 minus delta 0 this is 90 percentage right? nine portions of the total settlement and we know want to know the full 100 percentage that is 10 10 portions so here this is 0 0.6 minus 0 0.42 by 9 into 10 so this gives a value of 0 point uh, so the portions value is somewhat around mm. so if we subtract here it's 0 0.18 over 9 into 10 so this is around 0 0.2 m so if we add this 0 0.2 mm here so we'll get a delta 100 value of so delta 100 is around 0 0.62 mm so which is a slight variation uh, between the Casa Grande method and uh, the Taylor's method and finally 
where the secondary consolidation ends so where this end portion the value is 0 0.670 ml so here also we can distinctly find what are the uh, different settlements so from 0 0.42 to 0 0.62 so this would be our primary consolidation from 0 0.62 to 0 0.70 this would be our secondary consolidation part and from 0 0.382 to 0 0.40 this would be the initial settlement so this initial settlement occurs due to the air removal and the preloading which it has already experienced so i hope you would have uh, gained some knowledge from this uh, tutorial so let's meet uh, in the Q&A video.